Hi, everybody. This is Alan Fine, and I'm here with Lily Adjarova, who is the CEO of the Uganda Tourism Board. And the reason we're here today is we want to talk to our travel advisor uh, listeners about the value that Uganda proposes for guests. And this is Insider Travel Report. Let's, I'm excited about why Uganda, why out of all the countries in Africa, why the value is so great in Uganda. And first, let's start with, uh, you get the big five plus two more. Explain that, please. Iconic um, wildlife species that most people come for in Africa, which is the big five. Uganda offers more than the big five. We also have the additional big two which makes Uganda exceptional in offering the big seven. And the additional two are the mountain gorillas and the chimpanzees. Why Uganda? is because Uganda is the pearl of Africa. The pearl, why it is the pearl is because it's a representation of what everything Africa has, the depth, the variety and the diversity that you would get in all other countries in Africa is found in Uganda, from the wildlife diversity to cultural variety to landscape to everything. The benefit, if there can be a benefit to the pandemic, what happened to the animals? The pandemic kept people, the tourists, away from the wildlife conservation areas. And this uh, gave a lot of more time for the animals uh, to reproduce. So we had a baby boom in the, mountain, in the mountain gorillas during the lockdown, the first lockdown last year from March to June in Uganda. And uh, we also then took time to uh, do a population census on the other major wildlife species like the elephants, which number we have since found to have tripled and a lot of the other species as well. At the least, the population has remained stable, otherwise they have doubled or tripled. Wait, so I, what I recall you telling us, the gorillas, had a, a, they doubled, the mountain yeah. gorillas have doubled. And the, the elephants, elephants tripled. have tripled. And the, the lions, lions are the, the lions and the chimpanzees have remained the same. And most of the other species like the buffaloes and the antelopes have more or less also doubled. That's, that's so great. Now, and the other reason to go to Uganda is the, uh, how much, you have a large percentage of the bird population. Yes, Uganda has uh, 50% of the bird species that you would find on the continent of Africa. But we also, that is a representation of 11% of the world bird species. You will be able to get them. It's the reason why it has to be in Uganda. And then if, if you have a bucket list and you want to see the source of the Nile, you have that too. There's only one source of the Nile in the world. <laughs> river Nile is the longest river in the world, and the source is in Uganda. So you can't see that anywhere else other than in Uganda. And there are lots of other adventurous activity from boat cruises to tubing, to water rafting, to bungee jumping, up sailing that you can actually do on the Nile. Basically, with all of this to offer, you, you realized that you were underselling the country and you decided it was time for a rebranding. Can you tell us about that? Yes, very true. Uh, our focus at the beginning with our tourism development was more on nature-based, wildlife-based tourism. And uh, we have now 
taken time to develop and diversify the experience to travelers to Uganda. And this includes the wildlife experience, the cultural experience, the adventure experience, the unique landscape, you know, experience from having the source of the Nile to the permanent uh, snow on Mount Renzori right at the equator, plus so many others as well. Which is why Hollywood loves to shoot films there. Oh, yes. Uh, Uganda does offer unique uh, film location as well. Uh, you basically have, first of all, one of the biggest advantage is the weather. You know, you have sunshine every single day, you know, throughout the year in Uganda. So you won't be disrupted. You can shoot um, at the equator uh, in the morning and be able to shoot on the mountain, you know, in the afternoon. And you get light for how many hours? 12 hours a day. And never less. Nothing less. And, and even the rainy season is not that much of a bother, correct? The rainy season, normally it would rain more during the rainy season, but it would rain for three, four hours. And then the rest of the time, it's, it's bright and warm. And, and there are some other things that I found interesting. Talk about um, pineapple hunting. This is part of the new products that we have developed uh, under agro-tourism. So you actually get to have an experience where you go to different farms. And one of those are the pineapple farms where you, where you actually get to have a pineapple hunting tour. So you go to this big farm where there is pineapple and you move in the farm and get to pick that particular pineapple that you want to eat. And, and extending the agro-tourism, uh, for coffee lovers, tell us what you have. Uh, first, Alan, I need to make uh, put a fact here that uh, Uganda coffee is the best coffee. And uh, in addition to the taste of the coffee, uh, the experience that you can have of visiting a farm where you actually see the seedling of the coffee plant to being part of picking the berries to processing it and having a taste of it while on the farm is something that is quite unique as well to Uganda. And to come full circle, that very tourism helps support the gorillas? It does help support the gorillas and the local people as well, because we have some of the wild coffees right in the habitats where the chimpanzees live, the chimpanzees and the mountain gorillas live. So they are special, you know, kind of coffee because they are wild coffee. So we get to brand them as the gorilla coffee. But not just pineapples and, and the coffee, the food freshness we were talking about. The, the taste of the food that, that guests would experience? Well, just back to the pineapple. Uh, the pineapple in Uganda, I would say that uh, if one get to have a taste of the pineapple in Uganda, you would never want to eat pineapple from anywhere else. So as simple and factual as that. Uh, besides all the other food as well, all the different fruits from bananas, you know, watermelon, name it. The, the sweetness, the taste, the flavor that uh, the fruits have is quite different because of the amount of sunshine that we get to have. So it's, it's, it's really uh, it's, it's really tasty, but also organic. All our food is organic. And, the, and you mentioned the jackfruit was very special. Oh, the jackfruit. The jackfruit is in plenty. I know that uh, right now for those who are vegan, you know, the jackfruit is a very big substitute for meats, protein, and all that. And uh, we are very big, 
in supplies of jackfruits and it's just plenty it's everywhere we don't even grow them specifically on farms you know you just walk by the road and get to have a jackfruit and as part of this rebranding you said it was originally all wildlife but then you 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 started to include culture and other things let's talk about the number of tribes and and what can be learned and experienced um, Uganda has over 50 tribes, and uh, this represents diversity of culture, uh, which represents what the rest of Africa has as well. Because if we look into the history of Uganda, we have migration from northern Uganda all the way into Uganda to southern Africa. We had migration from uh, North Africa into Uganda and from Uganda into the rest of East Africa. So that's why Uganda has the representation of the rest of African culture as well because of the different migration that happened centuries you know, ago. And with the, the rebranding, very important to know that beyond the wildlife, beyond the culture, adventure, agro-tourism, and all that. Our key values for the new brand is sustainability, is collaboration, it's empowerment, and conservation. Well, tell us more about each of those pillars. Um, sustainability, uh, we are not looking at, uh, at, uh, at benefiting from travelers coming to Uganda just for today, not just for now, but we are looking at this being a long-term um, strategy, a long-term action that will help generations to come. And with this, we mean to have responsible travelers coming into Uganda because we do not want tourists will come and be destructive to our culture and change it, you know, to our wildlife and destroy it. So we need it to be sustainable. And with that comes along as well, the conservation, the conservation of wildlife. Um, we have the iconic species like the mountain gorillas. Uh, we, have, we have only less than, 2,000 of them left in the whole world. And Uganda has the most of the population. We have 57% of the mountain gorilla population in Uganda. So we need to protect this. And the protection and conservation of this is for the global community. Don't lose where you are in that. But I remember when we were talking, it's like in some parts of Africa, you may or may not see a mountain gorilla, but you will see them in Uganda, correct? Yes, uh, there are only three countries in the whole world where you can, you can actually view the mountain gorillas. Uganda, Rwanda, Democratic Republic of Congo. And right now, it's quite a challenge to have access in Congo. Yes, you can have it in Rwanda and Uganda, but definitely with a higher population, uh, you have it better in Uganda. But in addition to just not just the number, but the experience you will have in Uganda is that the location where our mountain gorillas are, are quite scenic, they are pristine, and the beauty that they offer in terms of other wildlife diversity as well, with the birds, with other mammals. Um, we have mountain ranges in these locations and the tribes that live around these national parks uh, are exceptional in the way of their living. So it gives you a cultural experience as well. Now, I interrupted you. You were talking about the pillars of the new rebranding and I yeah. jumped in about the mountain girls. But finish what you were saying, please. Yes, and uh, empowerment. Our empowerment is uh, we are looking at having the Ugandans and the local communities in particular take lead in the development, in the management of the various tourism uh, 
experiences, the services, whether it is with the lodges, whether it is with being guides, being uh, owners of two operators, we would want Ugandans to be empowered to own these businesses, to professionally run these uh, businesses and, and be leaders in the, in the tourism development in Uganda. That reminds me that you had mentioned that the government had stepped in. This is all part of getting everyone involved, that they stepped in to compensate for losses due to uh, any kind of animal movements. Can you tell us more about that, please? Yes, this has been one of the one of the key achievement, um, achievements in terms of policy during this COVID time for us was actually to get the government to uh, approve a, a law that allows compensation of destruction by wildlife. The wildlife do not know physical boundaries, so they get out of the national parks and sometimes you have the elephants trampling on people's crops and uh, a community, a family might lose all their crops for a whole season. And uh, in the past, without this law, they wouldn't be compensated in any way and it would be a big challenge for them. Now, with this policy, the government will compensate the family that experience such losses. But what I love about that is it puts everybody on the same side to protect the animals. There's nobody who's feeling animosity or anger toward an animal migrating. That shouldn't have to be. And it's great that uh, that policy was put in place. Absolutely. Absolutely. We need the positive uh, attitude and actions towards conservation of uh, the wildlife by the local people. It shouldn't be just the government officials in higher position dictating on the local community, the local community themselves should feel the benefit of conservation. This is not just only for economic benefit, but also for the ecosystem services. It's one of the things that the government has also considered in the conservation um, efforts whereby the local communities are being educated on the ecosystem services that the forest, you know, the mountains does offer for us from the soil to the carbon, you know, the oxygen that we breathe and the forests are helping to absorb the carbon dioxide, you know, and all that. So, it's, it's, it's very important that the local community have a buy-in for conservation, for the sustainability that we need. If travel advisors want to get involved, they want to learn more, they want to be better trained at selling Uganda, where should they go? Uh, one of the places to go to get information on uh, visiting Uganda is www.visituganda.com. And in, in there, we have a listing of uh, two operators who offer different packages of travelers to Uganda. And those listed are also the ones who are licensed by the government. Uh, that means they meet all the legal requirements in doing their business. So we highly encourage that any traveler to Uganda should visit, um, go to the website, uh, visit uganda.com to be able to know which two operators uh, to book their trips with. That means they're also vetted for following COVID procedures too. So that's all included. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, as you're rebranding though, there's going to be another website? Yes, uh, we, are, we, are, we are redefining our audience yeah, to Uganda in terms of visitors, and we will have our brand um, re refreshed to explore Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. So in the next few weeks, we will have uh, a website, the Visit Uganda, redirected to Explore Uganda. So it's Visit Uganda right now, but it will be ExploreUganda.com 
www.exploreuganda.com. Yes, yes. All roads will lead there. Yes, but uh, there will there will be no gap at all uh, as we relaunch as we launch the Explore Uganda website. The Visit Uganda will still be running, and uh, eventually, you know, the traffic will move towards uh, Explore Uganda. So there shouldn't be any gap in anybody getting information about visiting Uganda from any of the two. To wrap up, we go out to more than 95,000 travel advisors every day. What would you like them to know about the value of going to Uganda? The key value of visiting Uganda is value for money. When you visit Uganda, you get every other experience that you would have in Africa in Uganda. So you will be saving yourself the cost of flying to different countries by just having all the diverse experience in Uganda. So it's value for money for you to consider visiting Uganda. Thank you for presenting all that to us. Good luck with the rebranding. And I hope I get to see you soon. Thank you very much, Alan. I look forward to seeing you again. And most important, to welcome you to Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. Come and explore it for yourself so that you can be able to explain better about Uganda. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.